Hello, hello everyone. Um, going live at a new special time uh, today because we have um, a special guest joining us um, from Germany today, and that is Dee Franey. Hey Dee! Hey Dee, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, hi, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so thrilled to be chatting with you today. Likewise. Likewise. Awesome. So, um, yes, thanks everyone for watching and who will watch this later. Um, this is Entrepreneurship BS Busting, the show where we get real about entrepreneurship. And I have been uh, so excited this whole week uh, to talk to the incredible Dee Franey. Um, I love your bio. I cannot wait to hear your story. So why don't you just <laughs> jump in I, and tell us all about yourself and your business? Yeah, so I am a coach, a strategist, a general book kicker with love. <laughs> you know, I love to help ambitious women achieve big goals and dreams. I my whole background has been in change making before I started my, um, my own practice. I, I worked a lot in social, um, organizations and, um, I, I don't know. I've always been a helper, a giver. I want my life to have meaning and to give back. And I realized mm -hmm. that that's really who has been attracted to me and my mm -hmm. clientele and, um, and, and the work that I love doing, right? So people who are like, things are broken in this world. It's mm -hmm. not working. We must do better. And I want to be a part of that change. And so uh, I really work with change makers and disruptors and leaders and people who are like, let's do this. Yeah. Let's take on these challenges. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that. And I wrote it down. You wrote, um, you work with uh, you, smart, mouthy, ambitious change makers. I loved that. I wrote it. I loved it so much. I wrote it down. <laughs> so, oh, let's see. I think I lost you. Can you hear me? Experiencing technical dif difficulties. Looks like we lost D. Oh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, let's invite her in again. Nope. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Touch something I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> no, no, it's totally fine. I, I once lost a guest like midway through. It took us like three minutes. To re it's, it's all good. It, it happens. It happens. Um, where were we? I forget what we, oh, I was talking about your, your, your clients that you worked with. Um, but yeah, so just tell me about how you um, kind of got your start and were in your business um, and kind of the journey that, that you have taken along the way to get where you are now. Yeah, so I went to a lovely liberal arts college for my undergrad, and I was like, I am not going to go work for some corporation making other people rich. I want my life to be meaningful. I want to help others. And so I went in the route of um, nonprofit management. Mm. So I did all sorts of different angles of that with fundraising, grant writing, events, um, program delivery, and kind of worked my way up into management. And um, that's right around the time when I did my, my doctorate in organizational leadership mm. and was really on the trajectory to lead organizations. I ended up as a COO of a statewide, um, op doing operations for an international NGO. Mm -hmm. And I ended up being very, very sick. I was completely depleted, right? Like burnout, mm -hmm. overwhelm, exhaustion, because that industry really takes it out of people. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized one day that I couldn't keep doing that. Yeah. And because I had my foot in the door with higher education, I ended up working for a university uh, as a faculty member, but it was a really cool position because I got to coach people. Mm. And so I was coaching for them for about five and a half years. Again, it was rather than doing change making on a macro level within an organization, it was more change making at a micro level, mm. helping 
uh, a person achieve their goals. And mm -hmm. so I, I was really getting to use the same skills, but just doing it in a micro rather than a micro level. And I loved it. I really found that I enjoyed helping people be the change. Mm -hmm. It's so much, it's when you can impact them and help people change on the inside, that creates a bigger ripple than, you mm -hmm. know, broken, hurting people going out and trying to affect change, which is what I did, right? To the point yeah. of burnout. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I loved it, but I got to a point where I had two years of great performance reviews and no raise. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm tapped out here. And yeah. So there was really no opportunity to, um, unless I wanted to go in people management again, which I didn't want to do that, there mm -hmm. was no way for me to continue to grow there. So that's when I started my own um, practice in, in the beginning of 2019. And um, July of 2019 is when I quit my full time job and went all in on my business. So I've been going at it since then, like just uh, growing and growing and having so much fun. Nice. Awesome. I love that. First of all, congrats on your recent two year, two year anniversaries. Uh, you. as, that's awesome. Um, no, I, I resonate with that so much because I spent 10 years in nonprofit and education. Um, and it is, and I think you go into it, you know, I, um, I have par two parents who are I might call them burnt out hippies. I don't know if they ever left the hippie stage, <laughs> but they, you know, they inspired me just like a sense of like, hippie, you know, this, you have to fight for stuff. They were like the, you know, the out there protesting and that was their thing. And I was like, okay, you know, like the world's so effed up. I'm going to join this organization and we're going to fight poverty, but it's so underpaid. Like you put in your heart and soul, like to this organization uh, that underpays you. And then I think at the end of the day, I found out uh, I didn't give a shit about me and I was just a cog yeah. in the machine, right? So you put your heart and soul into that. So I, I uh, for, first of all, I, that resonated with me. But, um, <laughs> so, you know, it's so interesting because I think uh, for so many business owners, um, myself included, we didn't necessarily intend to be small business owners. Um, but it became like the path that we, we took and we love. Right. But it is so interesting. That is, uh, that is something that I, that keeps coming up in this interview. Uh, it's just like people who couldn't find their place in the system and chose just to do their own thing. Yeah. You know, it was really hard too, because as I was doing my research for my, for my doctorate, uh, I just hit this wall one day where I'm like, oh, we don't need to fix this system. We need to burn it down and start over. Because if we zoom out and say, we honor and recognize the inherent worthiness of all humans. As a society, yeah. we don't believe that people have to earn their worth yeah. or prove their worth, that we are all inherently worthy. Then we make different decisions on a societal level that renders the need for nonprofits obsolete, right? Yeah. The reason why we have nonprofit organizations is because there are people who are suffering because our system values some lives more than others. Yeah. If we zoom out and fix our society and say, no, everyone has inherent worth. No one should be suffering. No one should go hungry. No, like the, the need for most of these organizations goes away. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to work my, the rest of my career trying to fix a broken system that is hurting the helpers. Yeah. And it's handicapping the helpers. I mean, there's yeah. a whole laundry list of things that's wrong with it. And it's nothing against the people doing the good work in the system. Yeah. But the system is flawed. The system is broken. We need to do the work of saying, no, as a society, like every human is of equal value. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love, I love that. And I, um, I loved one of your recent Instagram posts just about that, that the same topic, just about how you, you know, implement change and it is the small scale stuff and just how it can feel so, so overwhelming because it is so effed up. I mean, especially when you are in the nonprofit system, man, you get a real close and intimate look of how effed up it is. Um, and even before that, you know, I was teaching in, a, in an inner city school district and, um, like, you don't know what you don't know. And I am just like shocked by my ignorance walking into that school. And they send young teachers into these school systems to like fix these problems and, you know, teach the children and all. And it's just like this kid 
Like, her mom is, like, pimping her out. Like, do you honestly yeah. think that me, like, her middle school, like, history teacher, she doesn't give a shit about that. Anyway, I digressed, but we're, <laughs> we're on the soapbox. No, girl. <laughs> it, that's the thing, though, right? It's, like, there's bigger problems. There's bigger fish to fry. Yeah. And that's, like, I don't know, a Band-Aid on a big, gaping, gushing wound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and it, 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 it does all come back to this, to the self work that we all need to do um, to become better as a society. Um, and I think that's, you know, taking it back to the to business, I think that that is something that I have really had to like hone in on is like working on my own, my own shit so that my business can su succeed. Because if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't do that work, you're going to burn out, you're, you know, it's going to do you know, it's just not going to, not going to work. So that's, I think is one big, been one of my biggest like learnings. Um, so I'd love to know if you have any, um, you know, biggest learnings, uh, advice for new entrepreneurs, like that kind of stuff you, uh, have, you know, that wisdom you've accrued. Oh man, that's such a loaded question. I think first and foremost, probably one of the most important things that you can do when you shift from being an employee to an entrepreneur is really adopting an entrepreneurial mindset. Mm. Uh, we are trained since birth that, you know, as an employee, you trade time for dollars. Mm -hmm. And there's this weird thing that um, humans do or Americans do at least that like busy equals successful. Mm. <laughs> and so if you bring both of those things into your business as an entrepreneur, you're going to burn yourself out. You're not going to create a sustainable business, right? Because you're trading time for money. There's mm. only one of you. Um, and that whole, like, and, and, and then when you overlay the fact that we feel like we have to earn our worthiness and prove our worthiness, right? So really disconnecting your value as a human being from the, the value that your business produces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then also the idea that you are trading money for value as a business owner and not time. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, you know, the underlying premise of like, uh, the, the biggest shifts in an entrepreneurial mindset, but there's so many more, right? Like this aversion to failure, right? We, most people have, a, don't want to fail. And the thing with entrepreneurship is it's failing constantly. <laughs> the faster that you fail, the more successful that you'll be, right? We, yeah. you know, we're not going to sit here and create the perfect plan and then, and then launch it once and everybody buys it. And, and it's as easy as all of these like online no. gurus who are like, Oh, buy my blueprint. <sighs> seven step thing. And you'll be just as successful as me overnight. Yeah. It's like, it's not that right. Yeah. It's like willingness to like go out there and iterate and try and, yeah. and fail forward and not take it personally. Right. Like, yeah. It's not you. It's just, you did an experiment. It either worked or it didn't. What are right. we going to, what, what are we going to test next to right. get to the result? And it's that right. tenaciousness, right? Right. That is part of being a successful entrepreneur. Yeah, no, I love that. I mean, and I think that even, you know, to, I always tell people that in terms of marketing, um, which is just that, you know, marketing, there's no one marketing plan. You always have to be testing. I just remember I was working at um, a climate change startup and they had put all of their eggs into this one basket. They produced this video. This video got produced, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so it's, they don't have a lot of money to begin with. So they put all their eggs in this basket and they were going to put the, they put this big advertising campaign behind it. And it just like bombed. Right. And so like, I think it's one of those situations where you, you know, you always have to be testing and testing with your audience and testing your messaging and testing to see, you know, what's going to work. And so you just have to, you know, for me in my industry, that's, that's super, super critical. Um, but it definitely applies uh, to entrepreneurship as well. Um, so to, to circling back around to failure, is there one in particular that you would love to share a failure uh, that happened? <laughs> oh, yeah. So <laughs> I am a military spouse and okay. we live in Germany. We moved here okay. just about two years ago. So okay. um, when I started my coaching business, I did most of um, my business building in person, you know, networking and referral marketing. And I really built up my clientele that way. Well, when I moved here, my brain was like, oh, everything is different now. You have to market online. Mm -hmm. And I, I, listen to that lie and when I was like oh well if I'm gonna be on the noisy internet then I have to niche more like my mm -hmm. niche doesn't make sense on the internet too much noise blah, 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 right so 
<laughs> I listened to my brain and all that drama and I was like, oh, okay, I have to, I have to niche. And I went in a direction that like made sense on paper mm. and, and could be highly lucrative, lucrative. And, uh, and I convinced myself that it was a good idea. I was working with a business coach at the time. And I was like, all right, I'm burning the ships. I told everybody I made all the big announcement everywhere instead of like slowly like iterating towards it and for like an entire month I just had to like coach myself every day and like force myself to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like okay I'm spending so much time trying to force myself to love the idea of working mm -hmm. with this niche yeah and so like a less than a month later I was like just kidding <laughs> <laughs> So that was a very public, like, uh, because I made such a big deal of it, yeah. right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I will, and I, and I love that. I love, I love the, uh, that you publicly acknowledged it, um, publicly acknowledging failure. I love it. Um, and it is so funny because I think um, oftentimes on social media, and it's one of my biggest complaints um, on social media is that people only want to, you know, project this, this perfect image. They only tell you the successes, right, you know, whatever. But I oftentimes, I like, me personally and with, and with my clients, like the times we talk about failures, that content, always outperforms like massively yes. because people want to know they're not alone um not alone in effing it up sometimes you're not alone out there yeah. people <laughs> it's, it's so true right like i when i walked it back i was just like just kidding but i'm sharing this with you like i feel like i have a lot of egg on my face i'm feeling like i've definitely felt some shame mm. here like freaking out about this but here's what I learned. Like I had to do that to realize that it wasn't the right decision. Had I not mm. done that, I would have had that like little in the back of my head, like, well, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe that's what I should try. So I actually, even though it was quote unquote a failure, it's really a success because I eliminated that option. Yeah, totally. I was like, no, I... Oh, I thought that might be a good idea. I thought that might be what I wanted. I also realized I didn't completely like listen to my inner knowing and my mm. intuition and trust that. So there were so many wins inside of that failure. And yeah. when I shared my whole process of what I learned through that and how I worked through it, I got so many responses. So I think that even though like I kind of pushed people away, they came back because they're like, wow, okay, I can relate to that. I have stumbled too. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So. Um, well, I mean, earlier you were mentioning about this, just the people of the internet who try to convince you that they're, um, you know, $27 sales funnel that it, or whatever it is will be the, the cure all to your business sales. Um, and really it was, it was, I mean, it was the $27 sales funnel that got me to start the show because it was, I just could not stand seeing this ad one more time. I was like, this is nonsense. This funnel's not going to like save your business. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Um, so that's why that's like, you know, I'm calling BS on uh, gimmicky uh, marketing and, 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 you know, one hit wonders uh, that will supposedly solve your problems. But I always love to ask guests, um, you know, if there's one thing or a couple things you want to call BS on when it comes to uh, business ownership, what would those things be? Yeah, I mean, I think it really is some of that, like, uh, oh, my friend, my friend just did a post about this, how there's like this correlation between like the diet industry like the mm. oh just take this magic pill um, mm -hmm. and it'd be so easy it's a path to least resistance you don't have to do yeah. any hard work you could have a six figure seven figure i mean shoot they're even saying now that the eight figures <laughs> nine figures there are some coaches and business people saying that their systems will help pe people build their business but it's like insane right like yeah no, there's hard work the barriers yeah. to entry to start a business now are lower than they have ever been which means every single person and their mother can own, start a business, but that also means you have to work harder to have a more successful business. <laughs> like this whole yeah. idea of like, just take this magic pill, just buy this $27 funnel, come yeah. work with me. I did this thing and it got me to six figures. So of course, like even though your business is yeah. radically different than mine, you should be able to do what I did and get the exact same results. It's like, right. it, it feels kind of like um, predatory right now. Totally, totally. So, no, yeah, and it's very, like, it's, yeah. 
if I have to call something out, it's that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And I think there is an underpinning too of even like MLM stuff, a lot of it popping up on, on, on Instagram and Facebook. I can't tell you the number of times that I've been invited to sit in a conversation about health products and you don't, you don't need to do anything. You just need to be a fly on the wall. I'm like, you're in an MLM. Like, yeah. F no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no. It's weird. It's like, okay, that just say what it is. Like, be real. Let's right. uh, treat people like adults that are capable of making decisions. It's either for them or not. Like, you don't have to trick them. Right. Uh, right. It's, it's gross. So, totally. Um, well, I uh, always like to, before we wrap up uh, our conversation, ask uh, guests if there's anything you would like to, to ask me um, before, we, before we wrap up. Oh my goodness. What is, well, how to go along with this whole, like my $27 funnel is going to save the world. What are your, what's your advice to business owners who don't want to fall into that same predatory garbage? You know, the, the real humans that are, that are um, great at what they do. How do you stand out without like having that flashy BS? Yeah. I think it all comes down to really being authentic. Um, just being yourself on the internet, then you're going to find your, your ideal clients, right? Like, you know, I was, I loved your content. I loved your vibe, your style. I was like, I need to, I need to know this person. Right. And so when you, when you do that, you're going to attract, um, attract the people that you want to work with. Um, I would say that stay away from anyone that promises you, if you follow this step-by-step -step process, they will guarantee results. Anyone that can guarantee you anything on the internet is lying, right? There are like ways that you should do things things that are better, better than others. But like, I, you know, I, I, I even really fell for it recently and it was being told like, I needed to follow the sales script, follow the sales script. It didn't, it just didn't feel right. And, you know, like, and I think it's so easy to, when you are just like maybe hitting a wall with your business or like trying to figure out how to move forward in the best way possible, it's easy to get sucked into, you know, you know, this person has the answers that I need. This, you know, program is everything that I wanted and more, whatever. And I think you just need to, you, you need to trust your intuition. You need to stay with your, your why and your vision. And then from there be like, okay, what are the steps that I know I can take to get there? And then, you know, if there are holes in that, in that, you know, timeline, you're like, okay, I need help here, here, and here. Well then find that person then, but don't just like hire someone on, on the outset and just like expect for them to like point you the way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I guess going back to your question of, um, do you, you know, uh, how you can stand out. I think, you know, it is really important to work on strategy, but I think, you know, especially on Instagram, um, less so on other platforms, but especially on Instagram, I think it's really, really important to lead into video because it gives your, your audience an, an opportunity to, to get to know you on a, in a different way and a different level than just like, you know, copy or feed post, right? Because you can edit those all, all day and it, you know, you know, they can, they, they aren't going to learn as much about you as if you, they can see your voice, can hear your, you know, your, see your personality, all that kind of jazz. So I would say be authentic, use video and, um, uh, watch out for red flags of someone promising you that they can guarantee you anything. I love it. It was so good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, D Franey, for joining me today. It was such a pleasure chatting with you. Likewise. Likewise. Thanks for having me on. All right. Have a great one. Ciao.